Hi, welcome to the NFPA Link YouTube channel. This page is dedicated to answering key questions that you have related to electrical and life safety. With easy to use digital access to NFPA codes and standards, NFPA Link is your window to productivity. Today I'm going to be talking about the testing of antifreeze when I'm using it in a sprinkler system. And the reason I'm talking about this is because there's been a lot of changes recently around antifreeze used in sprinkler systems and how we need to test and maintain that. And the biggest change being that now we need to use specifically listed antifreezes and their specific requirements on how that antifreeze is to be used. So I'm going to go into NFPA 25, which is the standard for the inspection, testing and maintenance of water-based fire protection systems. And I'm going to go into chapter five. We're talking about testing. So I'm going to go right into 5.3 and we're going to look for the antifreeze testing requirements. So we're going to scroll down here. We see 534. We see that we need to be testing antifreeze annually and there's a bunch of tests here or basically steps i need to take in order to perform that test i'm going to go ahead and look in the enhanced content and i notice that there is a flow chart here that goes over that specific requirement here and i'm going to also make it a little bit easier there is a fact sheet here that is linked as a related resource in this enhanced content that goes over all antifreeze requirements including um, if we scroll down we've got you know the requirements here for antifreeze out of nfpa 13 13r and 13d also a little bit about you know what is listed antifreeze and so on and then here's that flow chart about how i need to be testing anything installed per 13 or 13r meaning that i'm performing my testing per nfpa 25. and the biggest part here is Annually, I need to test it before heating season, and I need to determine what type of solution I have because I need to determine whether it's an acceptable solution or a non-acceptable solution. Or I determine it, and there's kind of only two options here. Either it's acceptable or it's not. N acceptable solutions are going to be listed antifreezes, pre-mixed propylene glycol that exceeds 30%, but it's used only for ESFR sprinklers, or um, an existing pre-mixed propylene glycol that's less than 30% by volume or glycerin that's less than 38% by volume. If it's not one of those, then I'm gonna have to replace it with that solution or convert to a drier pre-action system or use a listed heat tracing. Well, let's say we are one of those acceptable solutions. How do we perform that test? We're gonna take a test sample at the top and bottom of each system at the most remote portion of the system, and then at the connection to the water supply piping, if that's not uh, near the top or the bottom of the system. And then I need to take an additional test point for every 100 gallons over the 150 gallon system capacity. So if I have a larger system, I might need to take some more um, tests. Now, I'm gonna test the specific gravity either using a hydrometer or a refractometer. I need to look in the manufacturer's instructions to determine how that needs to be done. And it's either gonna be within the acceptable range or not within the acceptable range. It's either not gonna be provide that freeze protection that I need or not within the manufacturer's specifications, in which case I then need to drain the entire system and replace it with an acceptable solution. Or um, if it is acceptable, then it can remain until I test it again next year. So again, the biggest thing here is determining what solution I have and then if it's acceptable or not. If it's not acceptable, I'm gonna have to drain and refill with an acceptable solution or try to convert to something different. I hope that answers some of your questions about testing of antifreeze in sprinkler systems. I know it's been a, a big topic because there's been a lot of changes in codes and standards related to antifreeze and specifically the introduction of, of listed antifreeze solutions into the market. So um, that's a bit about how you know 5.3 covers antifreeze in NFPA 25. Now, if you want to know more about how you can use NFPA Link to go through a lot of these requirements or help you with your job, go ahead and go to nfpa.org slash link.